So in order to keep the high voltage connection safely out of reach um, in an EV conversion, uh, what most people do is they make contactor or junction boxes like these with all the high voltage contacts in them. Uh, so in this video I'm going to be going over what these boxes are for, uh, why they're important, and what I have in them. So off each end of the pack is a connection. One is for the main positive terminal and one for the main negative terminal. Uh, the whole pack is about 120 volts nominal. And this box here is where the main negative terminal for the pack leads to. Um, so if you undo these screws, I have a bus, copper bus bar in here where all the connections will be. So because I have two parallel strings of modules, uh, each one, each string has five modules in it, I have two connections here and here where each string will have the main negative lead connect to. Uh, they'll be bolted on here. And then this third uh, larger M8 bolt is the main negative lead that goes to the inverter, which will be the highest current draw. And then the other two leads here, one is for the DC to DC converter, the main negative for that uh, load, and then the other one for the charger, for charging uh, each string of modules. To secure this bus bar in here to the plastic housing, I used rubber uh, vibration mounts, which people often use with garage doors and stuff, uh, to keep this bus bar, you can't really see them, but they're on each, each end held in by these bolts here and it lets this bus bar wiggle somewhat because there's no metal to metal contact between the top of this uh, piece and the bottom. Uh, so there's rubber that keeps it isolated from these two mounting points on the bottom of this junction box. So the positive side of the high voltage wiring is a lot more complicated than the, the negative side uh, because you need to have contactors and fuses. Uh, and this here is my high voltage 800 amp fuse rated for 300 volts DC um, and this is where both of the main pack positive connections, one from each parallel string, come in. So one comes in on this side, one comes in on this side, and they meet at this terminal. And then from this side here is the output to the contactor box, the main contactor box. Now the reason that this is off-center is because I need to have a current sensor that can measure the flow of current in and out of the battery modules. And I'll be putting that right here. It's a circular uh, Hall effect sensor similar to how the accelerator pedal works uh, to detect how much current is flowing through the wires that lead to and from the batteries. And this small hole here is for the signal wires for that current sensor. So this is the main positive contactor box. Uh, you can see it looks a little different than the other ones as a clear lid. I thought it'd be cool to be able to look and see what's going on inside uh, without having to open it up. Uh, so I have two contactors in here, a bus bar similar to the negative contactor box, and then a bunch of holes drilled in the side for all the connections. So this contactor on the left is the main positive contactor. It's run off of 12 volts. Uh, it'll be controlled by the BMS, and this is a main uh, power switch for the entire system. So when this is not closed, not in the closed position, uh, not being powered through these wires, there will be no current flowing out of the batteries because there's no for it to go. Uh, when this contactor closes, this bus bar is now energized, and then this contactor can be closed. This is the 48 volt contactor that comes with the Hyper 9 system, and this contactor can only be controlled by the inverter. Uh, it runs off 48 volts, of course, so it can't be switched with the normal 12 volt switching voltage that is the only power source that I have available outside of the inverter. Um, and then, similar to the negative main bus bar, there's a number of contacts here for the other things, DC to DC converter, uh, charger, and whatever else. I might add down the line, like an AC compressor or a cabin heater, high voltage cabin heater. And the last junction box I have is this low voltage junction box here. So bolted on top of it, I have this 12 volt power distribution fuse panel. Uh, I only have one fuse in it right now, one connection. This is for the BMS because I haven't wired up uh, anything else to it yet. But this is where all the other 12 volt accessories will be wired up to. I think this thing can take up to 100 amps total. Um, and then inside of this box is all of my lower voltage control circuitry. So I have the SIMP charge, which handles the J1772 charging, uh, the SIMP BMS, for th uh, which handles the BMS functions for the Tesla modules. And then this is actually the high voltage relay uh, for the Hyper 9 inverter because the switch, the key on switch for the Hyper 9 
the lower voltage Hyper 9, the X1 controller, runs at full pack voltage, which is about 120 volts. Uh, and most switches are not able to switch that. Most like passenger area switches are not rated for 120 volts. Usually they're only rated for up to 32 volts or so. So this is a relay which allows me to switch the 120 volts on and off with a 12 volt uh, switch. As for where I'll be mounting each of these junction boxes, the negative junction box is going to be mounted on the back of the front battery box, the battery box which is going where the radiator was. Um, the low voltage junction box uh, is going on the driver side of the uh, battery box that's above the engine, the battery box that holds the five modules. Um, the fuse, fuse junction box, this box is going on the passenger side of that same battery box, and then this, the most interesting uh, junction box, which, with the two contactors, the positive junction box, is going on the passenger side in front of the wheel well, um, obviously in the engine compartment. And since this junction box isn't mounted directly to a battery box, uh, I had to make a mounting bracket for it so this can bolt it right into the inside of the engine bay.